Now this, this is the betel nut, also known as the areca nut. The betel nut is the seed of the areca palm, and it's a small oval-shaped nut that is typically chewed for its stimulant effects. The betel nut is often wrapped in a betel leaf along with slacked lime and sometimes tobacco. And this creates a preparation known as pan or betel quid. From the bustling markets of South Asia to the tranquil islands of the Pacific, the areca nut, also known as the betel nut, is more than just a seed. It's a symbol of tradition, community, and cultural identity. Across regions, the way that the betel nut is prepared and consumed varies. For example, India, they commonly mix it with spices and sweeteners, while in the Pacific Islands, the nut is often chewed with coral lime for a more intense experience. And each preparation tells a unique story of the local traditions and tastes. Now the main addictive compound that's in the betel nut is something called aracoline. Aracoline is a nicotinic acid-based mild parasympathomimetic stimulant alkaloid found in the areca nut. And in its freebase form, it's an odorless, oily liquid. Interestingly, the psychoactive effects are comparable to that of nicotine. Also, very addictive. So addictive that it is the fourth most commonly used human psychoactive substance after alcohol, caffeine, and nicotine. In general, Aracoline readily crosses the blood-brain barrier and has multiple psychoactive properties, acting as a non-selective partial agonist of muscarinic and nicotinic acetylcholine receptors at their alpha-4 slash beta-2 and alpha-6 slash beta-3 subunits. My god. Okay, on the real though, reading some of this stuff is quite difficult. It's got me sounding like this mother over here. As, no, I, I promise, like, and even, even, it's, it, it was Anyway, in humans, the effects of aracoline can vary based on dosage and individual sensitivity. Chewing betel nut often results in a range of similar effects, including cognitive enhancement, psychostimulation, euphoria, arousal, aphrodisiac properties, anxiety reduction, and sedation. However, regular use can lead to addiction. And like many addictive substances, discontinuing can trigger withdrawal symptoms, including mood swings, anxiety, irritability, and insomnia. Now, betel nut consumption remains a predominantly Asian phenomenon. For Indians, Malaysians, and Indonesians, betel nut chewing is as familiar as chewing gum to Americans. And surprisingly, women are two to six times more likely to chew betel nut than men, except in India and Thailand, where both sexes equally practice it. And I know some of you are probably thinking, well, wait a minute, why are you making this? I, I don't have a reason. I just said, f*** it, and let's just make this. Like most videos, we need a round bottom boiling flask. 250 milliliters of toluene was added to the flask, as this will be our solvent for the reaction. I then added 25.08 grams of nicotinic acid, as this will be the starting material to get to aracoline. I also slammed dunk disturbar in, even though it won't do shit for a little bit. You can see that the stir bar is having some erectile dysfunction, and it just doesn't work. I had to manually stir this just by swirling it around, which was very wizardly. I then added 22.72 grams of triethylamine, and if you've never smelled triethylamine, uh, imagine going to a rundown fish market, and they have decaying, rotten fish on the side of it, and you take a nice good whiff, that's what triethylamine smells like. After that, I did the manual swirl again, and most of our nicotinic acid is dissolved. The stirbar's performance anxiety has finally reduced, and it's finally stirring our solution. I equipped an addition funnel, as we need this for our next free agent. Now, we need methyl iodide. I did it in a separate area with my ventilation going, as it's pretty carcinogenic. I put the methyl iodide in the addition funnel, and I added a temperature probe, which will help regulate our mantle's heating temperature. We need to add the methyl iodide dropwise, and I decided to go slowly. Well, sort of. My goal was to get it about one drop per second. As the methyl iodide was slowly dripped into our reaction mixture, it actually started to turn yellow and quite opaque. Now, I don't have a PhD in chemistry, but I'm pretty sure that the reaction is happening. Once all the methyl iodide was added, we now need to heat this up to 50 degrees Celsius and leave it for three hours. When I looked in the reaction flask, I noticed it was looking suspiciously thick. Damn, boy! Now, of course the stir bar wasn't working, so I had to manually swirl this around. This is our quaternary ammonium salt, or in other words, 3-methoxycarbonyl-1-methylperinidinium iodide. After I let it react for three hours, it turns slightly more orange, but what's really happening in this reaction? 
What's happening overall is our nicotinic acid will react with methyl iodide and triethylamine to create our quaternary ammonium salt. To start things off, triethylamine will deprotonate our carboxylic acid. The carboxylate anion will then attack methyl iodide, as iodine is a good leaving group, and this ejects out iodide. Then the nitrogen in the pyridine ring, which is attached to our new methyl ester, can attack methyl iodide again, performing an N-alkylation. This in fact also ejects iodine as a leaving group, and we get iodide. Since our nitrogen will now be positive due to the alkylation, our iodide can then make a quaternary ammonium salt, and that is what is in our reaction flask. Here's what the salt looks like, and it's this beautiful yellow oranges color. And obviously, it's not soluble in our toluene, so it's not going to dissolve. To fix that, all we're going to do is add 250 milliliters of water so we can proceed on to our next reaction. After the addition of the water, you can see our quaternary salt slowly start to dissolve. We now need to perform a reduction, and we're going to add 79.25 grams of sodium triacetoxyborohydride. I need to add the sodium triacetoxyborohydride portion-wise over an hour. If you're curious as to why we add this over a time period, it's just to do safe, controlled, efficient chemical reactions. Here's a better view of the reaction taking place. We can see these hydrogen bubbles clinging to the sides of the flask. And our previous product is being reduced. As the reduction was taking place, the reaction flask started to get a little warm, so I put it into an ice bath. After all of the additions and letting it stir just briefly, we can see that we have a biphasic system of water and toluene. This now needs to stir for four hours at room temperature before we proceed on to the next steps. Now you might be curious what this reduction really is, and let me show you. In this reaction, our previous salts, which is now an ion in solution, will be reduced to our aracoline. And we'll be using sodium triacetoxyborohydride as it will selectively reduce iminium species and aldehydes. Initially, the pyridinium ion, which is positively charged, undergoes nucleophilic attack by a hydride from the reducing agent. This forms a dihydropyridine intermediate. A positively charged proton is added to the double bond in the dihydropyridine intermediate because the electron-rich double bond can stabilize the charge, helping to form a more stable, partially reduced structure that is easier to further reduce. A second hydride transfer occurs, further reducing the dihydropyridine to a tetrahydropyridine. This results in the loss of aromaticity in the pyridine ring, and forming our compound, aracoline. What we need to do now is separate the toluene from our aqueous layer. We now need to keep the organic layer as the product is in the organic layer. So I separated it out. Now we're actually going to extract from our aqueous layer again with some toluene. This is me pouring the aqueous layer back in. I added 100 milliliters of toluene, and the reason that we're doing this is if there's any leftover aracoline in the aqueous layer, we need to get it out with the toluene. Both of the toluene layers, one from the reaction and one from the washing again of the reaction mixture, was put into a separatory funnel. The combined toluene layers were then washed with 100 milliliters of water. I then extracted twice with 10 milliliters of 10% hydrochloric acid. This should protonate our product and put it into our aqueous layer, and I collected them both each time in an Erlenmeyer flask. I'm going to be very honest with you, I have zero idea why this says 100 milliliters. Usually I have a piece of paper that I write down on my notes on, but apparently I never made a note about this. I was supposed to only have 20 mils of our acid extraction, and, well, I think I might have added more water to it at the end. It almost feels like I'm schizophrenic right now, because I really don't remember doing that, but apparently I did. Anyway, what I was supposed to do was use a 40% sodium hydroxide solution to adjust the pH to a pH of 12. Though, during the addition of the sodium hydroxide solution, it did start to get warm, so I put it into an ice bath, just in case. When it was a pH of 12, this should be our freebase aracoline, which means we can extract it with an organic solvent. So I put our basic aqueous layer into the set funnel, and we're going to extract with 50 milliliters of toluene. The two toluene extracts were then washed twice with 10 milliliters of distilled water. They were then dried with magnesium sulfate, filtered, and put into a flask. All that's left to do is get the toluene out by doing a vacuum distillation. As I pull the vacuum, we can see some off-gassing, and that's those bubbles that are in the solution. After turning on the heat, shortly after, our toluene started to distill over. It was also going kind of bananas in the boiling flask. Once no more toluene was coming over, I was excited to see our product in the boiling flask. 
Man, what the f is this little ass puddle? Now, this is a photo of the product, as apparently, I did not record a video of the product. But I also ended with 0.14 grams of aracoline, with a percent yield of, sadly, 0.44%. I was genuinely starting to tweak like I just did a fentanyl parade over the weekend. The reason why I was so angry was I followed the patent almost exactly how it wanted it. Though, after talking to Chemistry Jesus, which really is that chemist, he was worried about the pH and the methyl ester. See, now the problem is the patent said the pH was adjusted to 12. This is a pretty high pH, and likely, the methyl ester of the aurecholine likely got Riley reeded, which means it got f***ed. I also found this funny little paper in the ACS Chemical Neuroscience called Dark Classics in Chemical Neuroscience of aurecholine to which it kindly let me know that with heating with alkaline results in aracoline hydrolysis at its ester group. What I think happened was our pH was just way too high. And I don't know if the patent did that on purpose or not, but it just felt too high. Well, and we also saw that it was too high. It is possible too that when I added the sodium hydroxide solution that that minimal heating did something to it. Now I'm not exactly sure. I think it was a combination of both a very high pH and that heating that caused it to break that methyl ester. Additionally, I also had it analyzed from Brent over at More Analytical. He did this for the channel, so make sure to thank him in the comments and to make sure to check out his website that I've linked down below. A GCMS was run on that previous sample and we got some pretty interesting results. Now we do have aracoline, which is at 25.095 minutes. Now we also have methyl nicotinate and 1,2-benzene dicarboxylic acid butyl cyclohexyl ester. Starting with methyl nicotinate, something happened and the N alkylation wasn't there at the end. Now we did get our aracoline, which is very, very exciting, but we also got that nasty one, which is that long compound. This is actually used in plastics and one of the funnels that I used was plastic. However, I thought that it wasn't dissolvable in the solvent that we used but apparently it was. To be honest, I know that funnel is good for most solvents, but the solvent that I used likely wasn't the best for it. That was on me, gang. I'm sorry. Though, overall, we still got aracoline, so we can still say we made it. Now, I did try doing the procedure again. However, I used a different one that I found on Science Madness, and I'll link that down below in the description. I'm not going to bore you by showing every single step, so I'm going to do it pretty fast and show you exactly what happened. The first step involved doing a Fischer esterification by using methanol and sulfuric acid. The methyl nicotinate was then isolated and used for the next step. Then using methyl iodide again, we did the N-alkylation and we had our quaternary ammonium salt. Then I used sodium borohydride and glacial acetic acid to make sodium triacetoxic borohydride in C2 and reduced our salt that way. Also, for the extraction at the end, I adjusted the pH to a pH of 10 and had everything in an ice bath the entire time. After doing all of the extractions the right way, the procedure said we'd have a reddish oil at the end, which should be our re-choline. There was a little bit of toluene left in this, but you get the point. Now, I did try turning it into the hydrobromide salt. However, I had a couple problems and it really didn't work out. This looks nice, however, most of the product was on the bottom, and I overdid it accidentally on the hydrobromic acid, over-acidifying it, and then it did the esterification when I tried distilling off the solvent. It left me with this filthy peasant shit, and I really didn't like it. Christmas is coming up this year, so maybe I can do a white elephant gift for someone. My life lesson for the day is don't make the salt version. But I'm just gonna say I still had it, okay? Before I did the salt, I still had it. Now, of course, I can't analyze this because I accidentally f***ed it up, but I'm still going to say that we made one of Asia's most addicting compounds, even if it is only 0.14 grams. Okay, see you later.